Welcome to Mojo Travels, and today we're sharing our top 10 tips for traveling the world without quitting your day job. I've made every mistake in the book, and I think that kind of qualifies me to be a bit of an expert now. I get to work where I want, when I want, and how I want, in every sense of the word. Allow yourself to be pleasantly surprised, know what it is that you need, and go with your gut. Are you a fan of our videos? Be sure to subscribe to Mojo Travels and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at different ways that you can spend more time abroad without sacrificing your career. In order to bring you the very best information, we've teamed up with Safety Wing and a number of experienced digital nomads to give you first-hand insight from those who have committed to a lifestyle that combines work and travel. Are you thinking about becoming a digital nomad? Tell us about your dream work travel arrangement in the comments below. The most rewarding part about being a digital nomad is the flexibility to work from different places. This way I get to explore a country at a slow pace and I actually feel like I live there. It's not like I'm on vacation. Number 10. Work those points. If travel is your top priority, then you should tailor your financial planning around that. One thing that people may not know about that you can get with your points is stuff, like blenders. And the points programs will often promote these purchases because it highly undervalues the points. So don't do it. Save your points for the skies. In today's competitive business landscape, companies are always looking for ways to acquire and retain new customers. As consumers, we've arguably never had more options in terms of loyalty and reward programs. The key is identifying the programs that work best with your travel plans and committing to lifestyle choices that maximize your return on investment. One way to get travel points that most people don't know about is to link your frequent flyer account with partner businesses. So this can be transportation companies like Uber or Lyft, or rental car companies and hotel chains. You can get extra points for free. From the credit card you use to the gas stations and grocery stores you visit, even online shopping, there are countless opportunities to rack up points and travel miles. With the right credit card, you can ensure that every dollar you spend goes towards your next trip, including the money you spend while traveling. Trust us, it adds up. The most impressive thing that I have bought using my travel points is a round trip first class ticket to Iceland. Number nine, master the art of business travel. If you've got a job that involves travel opportunities, embrace it. Communicating to your supervisor or team leader that you're happy to jump on a flight last minute to meet a client, cover a story or negotiate a contract shows that you are a team player deliver results while on work trips and they'll keep coming back to you for these assignments abroad. Meanwhile, you're getting your work to cover the biggest cost of travel, the airfare. The key thing to consider with embracing business travel is having the vacation days on hand to make the most of these flights. Get the job done that you were sent to do, but also be sure to book a few days at the end of your trip to really appreciate the destination. If you can make that per diem stretch to cover the whole trip, all the better. Number eight. Consider joining a program. I think my number one tip for new digital nomads is to take baby steps. Um, you know, I think if you're feeling overwhelmed, start off with traveling a little bit closer to home. Being a digital nomad makes for a uniquely rewarding experience. But for those just getting started, it can also be quite overwhelming. Thankfully, in response to the growing interest in the digital nomad lifestyle, a number of programs and services have popped up catering to individuals wanting to work abroad. So there are some awesome groups out there, and basically it helps you to arrive in one place, have a community already built up, usually a place where there is, you know that you can work with great Wi-Fi. Insurance is another important thing to consider. Using a travel insurance like Safety Wing has made my remote working life way easier because when you are far from home, you never know when you would need medical attention. Perhaps even more helpful than the logistics, however, is the sense of community that develops around digital nomads, both online and abroad. Be sure to take advantage of the tips and recommendations that your fellow nomads have to share when planning your trip. Number seven, plan your schedule abroad. When most people are traveling, they're on vacation. Maybe they need to check their work email occasionally, but for the most part, their time is their own. From the moment they get up until their head hits the pillow, 
the only thing that matters is getting the most out of the experience. For me, the biggest obstacles around working remotely have been getting into a routine as quickly as possible. It's always been about me kind of figuring out where I want to work, where I want to eat, where I want to hang out, get groceries, all of that stuff to kind of maintain my level of productivity. Um, also, it's having a portable uh, work setup so that you're not hunched over like uh, the hunchback of Notre Dame all the time whilst working on your laptop and, and finding a setup that works there. As a digital nomad, you need to be able to block out the many distractions and focus on work. It requires great self-control because without the income from remote work, the experience comes to an end. All of us have a different biological clock, so you want to figure out which hours of the day are you most productive? And then make sure that you're in a location where the time zone fits your best hours of the day and so that you'll be available when your coworkers or customers need you. And for that reason, the work always has to come first. The key to striking the right balance is having clearly defined work windows, leisure windows, and planned activities. Find the hours of the day that you're most productive. Then make sure that you have concrete plans to look forward to. The right headspace and motivation can make all the difference. Number six, travel solo. The digital nomad lifestyle is typically a solitary one. The toughest part about being a digital nomad is that when we are constantly bouncing between countries, it's not easy to make deeper connections with people you meet. This is why I think it's important setting up a base and spending a few months in each location. Couples have been known to embrace the lifestyle together, but the community overwhelmingly consists of individual travelers. The advantages of traveling solo are many. I mean, it is incredibly empowering and it's liberating. You can do what you want, when you want, how you want, where you want, for as long as you want. You get to call all the shots. This can take some getting used to, but if you're looking to see the world, it's really the most effective way to approach it. You don't depend on anyone else. You can decide when to go and where to go without consulting or without, um, you know, having to wait for anyone else. Anyone who's booked a trip with family or friends knows all too well how hard it is to find a travel window that fits everyone's schedule. Thankfully, if you're traveling somewhere that's become popular with digital nomads, chances are that you'll quickly find your way into a local community of like-minded travelers. It's this balancing act that's at the heart of the lifestyle. You have the personal freedom of an independent traveler to live and work wherever you like. But you're part of a larger community that you can connect with during your time in a destination. I think the most rewarding part of being a digital nomad is probably the people that you meet and um, you know and really connect with, and also the communities that welcome you into their lives. Like I just know that I'm a part of something that's really, really beautiful, um, and it's it's a joy to kind of be a part of that and have that in my life. Number five, pitch it to your boss with a plan. And I actually negotiated my last two years with the company to work completely remotely. If you've got a job that you love and it can be done remotely, what's holding you back? For most people, it's the optics. The old fashioned way of thinking is that when people are working remotely, they aren't doing their best work. Counterpoint, people do their best work when properly motivated. And being able to do your job from somewhere new and exciting every few months sure sounds like a strong motivator. So when approaching your supervisor or boss about the possibility of working from abroad, it's important to have a clear plan as to how it's gonna work. It might mean working strange hours or even taking on new responsibilities that better fit your new time zone. But when presented with the right strategy and outline, most employers will have a hard time turning down your proposal. And if you truly do your best work those first few months abroad, all the better. Number four, embrace stopovers. When booking flights, people are always looking for the most direct route possible. And that makes sense. With conventional travel, layovers add stress in the form of potential missed connections and cost you precious hours wasted in transit. But what if your stopovers were mini travel experiences rather than hours lost in the airport? If you've got a flight with two layovers in major cities, see if you can stretch them and spend some time exploring those waypoints. If you want to work a bit while there, so be it. 
Such is the freedom of the digital nomad lifestyle. And now you're scratching two more destinations off your bucket list, or at least testing them out in preparation for a longer visit in the future. And really, the best experiences often arise from unexpected circumstances. Plus, flights with long layovers generally tend to be the cheapest option. So not only are you adding destinations and experiences to your main travel plans, but you're arguably saving money while doing it. Number three, make travel the full-time job. For the last four years, I've been helping more than 500 companies and startups to find the best talent anywhere in the world from customer service roles to marketing, sales, product manager, and design. What if your schedule was always your own? What if your professional focus could be on travel itself and sharing it with the world? Or even with helping others embrace the digital nomad lifestyle? The online landscape provides ample opportunity not only for remote self-employment, but also the means to earn a solid income within the travel industry. Consider this. According to a survey conducted by Apple Vacations, the average American spends 200 hours daydreaming about travel. That is a serious appetite for travel content. This isn't something you need to do overnight either. You can start by working a more conventional job remotely and slowly build your personal travel business with a blog, YouTube channel, or by offering other travel-related services. I've made money online a number of different ways, but in recent years, I've settled into a fully passive income through blogging. It takes hard work and dedication, but travel could quite literally be what you do for a living. Number two, find a job that involves frequent travel. Not everyone has the self-starter spirit it takes to launch their own business, let alone one centered on the ever-changing world of travel. And that's okay. You can still travel the globe without ever explicitly becoming a digital nomad. There are many jobs out there that offer a steady salary and ample opportunities for adventure at the same time. And unlike in our previous entry, we're not just talking about the occasional business trip. No, by taking a job that requires frequent travel, think 50% of the time or higher, you can enjoy many of the perks of the digital nomad life, but with a bit more security. Being a flight attendant has long been a popular profession for this very reason. I am a remote work expert because I started off my career with the original remote job, which is being a flight attendant. And after 11 years in the sky, I decided to start my own life coaching business from the ground. And today I work for Wi-Fi Tribe, leading communities of remote professionals while we work together around the world. Cruise ships, tour companies, travel agencies, the hospitality industry, working as a sales rep. For those who don't mind unique challenges, there are many careers that can combine travel and work on a regular basis. Number one. Go freelance. In a post-COVID world, there's more opportunity than ever to work remotely. Businesses have seen firsthand just how many jobs can be done from home or abroad. I think most office jobs or really any knowledge worker job could be done remotely. In fact, I also think a lot of traditional jobs can be done remotely as well. It just takes a little bit of creativity and persistence, and there's a lot of jobs that you wouldn't think could be done remotely, but that you can. But working an office mandated schedule can be tough when you're connecting with people on the other side of the world. If you want to get the most of your time as a digital nomad, you may want to consider striking out on your own. The first advice that I always give to people who want to become a digital nomad is to find ways to turn a personal passion into a project that can provide value to other people. I know that it's easier said than done, but I believe that everybody is good at something and you should follow your heart and not the money. As a self-employed freelancer, you have control over your workload and schedule. It can take time to build up a client base, but once you've proven your worth and established yourself in your field, freelance work opens up a wide, wide world of possibilities. My number one tip for aspiring digital nomads is to find a job that you really love. If you're doing something you really love, you're never gonna feel like you're working a day in your life. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Travels. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.